My name is Rand Brenner, and I'd like to welcome you to MedTech Monday Conference. I'm going to be talking today about something that's going to impact everybody here. You all have intellectual property, right? You should all be raising your hand. You all have intellectual property. You may not even realize you have intellectual property, but I can tell you everybody in the medical device space, med tech space, biotech, you've all got IP. And the game is all about IP. And today, I'm going to talk to you about licensing, but we're going to, I'm going to focus on the digital healthcare side of it. There's many aspects to licensing. As you heard from Daniel earlier today, the digital healthcare market is growing, and it is growing rapidly, and it's a a big market and it impacts everybody in the uh, medical device and med tech space because at some point your medical device or technology is going to have to be connected somewhere. So you will be becoming a connected medical device. So today what we're going to cover is that I'm going to talk a little bit about the digital healthcare market. Um, you heard a little bit from Daniel. I'm going to talk about the licensing aspect and then go through some samples for you because I think it's important to see some what I call them samples. I mean, case studies is so boring. It's better to say it was something that's a little more interesting, don't you think? Some key licensing terms and then to summarize uh, what we talk about. So just a little bit about myself. My company is Licensing Consulting Group. I work with companies on the business development and sales side, not the legal side. You heard earlier from the IP attorney. That's who you go to when you have to figure out how to get your patents done or if somebody isn't cooperating, take legal action. I work with you on the, on the um, money-making side. How do we take that IP out into the market? How do we form partnerships? Who's the right partner? Negotiate it, put the deals together, and make sure everybody is doing what they're supposed to do. I work with a lot of medical device companies, med tech companies, surgical devices, orthopedic devices, balance devices. It really runs the gamut. What I can tell you is, is more. I speak with more and more companies every day who see the changes and the challenges in the uh, medical device market and licensing is a strategy that if you're not thinking about you should be thinking about today it's not a either or strategy it works in tandem with your current go-to-market strategy and it's a way for you to expand your business tap other markets and get your technology out there beyond just selling direct so as was discussed earlier this morning this is a huge market it's growing and of course there's a lot of figures that are thrown about about the size of it um, half a billion dollars or 500 billion maybe more the important thing to understand about the digital healthcare market is what you're talking about is is changing a system that's existed for 2,000 years which is basically when you require uh, medical assistance you have to get up and go somewhere to get it okay and that is no longer a practical solution for many people. So the idea of what digital healthcare is designed to do is to move it from location-based to patient-based, where you no longer have to go and seek out your medical care. Your medical care comes to you. And so a big part of that, of course, is telehealth care and what they call mHealth, telehealth care being the communication side of digital healthcare and the M health being the data collection side because really healthcare today is about data collection. I'm going to be uh, getting into that more, but our bodies are giant computers putting off reams and reams and reams and reams of data. And the challenge has been for healthcare throughout the, the, the decades and the centuries is what do you do with all that data? In most cases, it's just wound up in a repository that sits in the, in the basements of hospitals and medical clinics around the United States. Yet that's the same data that can solve many of the challenges that we have today from diseases to treatments and everything else in between. And when you look at that, digital data really is the oil of healthcare today. Everything is about the data. You hear the talks you heard earlier today about the big tech data companies coming into it. Everybody is converging on this market because it's all about the data. The data is leading to amazing breakthroughs. And this data is coming in from many areas. And for some of you in this um, conference today, you may have medical technology or medical device that is involved in in and or will be involved in, in collecting that data and that includes health records test results diagnosis diagnostics and wearables and demographic data and the magnitude of that data coming in is overwhelming and it's it's overwhelming because what do you do with all that data today we live in um 
a society we've never had more information about health care yet we know so little and the problem is is because of with all that information the ability to be able to sift through it and use it is the challenge that's where digital health care is presenting an amazing opportunity and one of the things to understand about the healthcare industry is because it's 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 growing it's so competitive um, there's also been a growth in licensing in fact licensing now uh, when you look at cross industries that are involved in licensing and one of the challenges with licensing of course is getting a hold of the data because most often a number of license a big portion of licensing deals are never announced and even to find them in public company disclosures you have to dig but in the data that is available one trend is 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 really evident and that is healthcare licensing and healthcare licensing is growing and in 2006 it accounted for almost 25 percent of all licensing transactions now i want you to um, i want to share something uh, an example with you to give you a nice idea of the magnitude earlier this year just after new year's one of the largest licensing deals in history was announced I don't know if anybody caught this. It was Roche Pharmaceuticals paid up front $1.1 billion for the rights to a muscular dystrophy gene therapy outside the United States. Outside the United States. Now, get your head around this. $1.1 billion and they don't own anything. They just have the rights to use this. Now, why is this significant? Because it's a trend that's continuing to accelerate with all these therapies. Can you imagine depositing that check? Hi, I'm Rand Brenner. I'm from really cool med tech company. Hi, George. Listen, I'm going to need your help with a deposit. Yeah, we just closed this, this licensing deal. What? At 1.1 billion. George? George? huge can you imagine wouldn't it be great to deposit that check the humor the point of the humor is to get you to understand that licensing is big business and it's something that you need to really make a part of your medical device or your medical technology company so here are five examples i'll take you through fairly quickly but i want you to get an understanding of the different ways that licensing is being used in the digital healthcare space. So the first is patient app apps, connecting patients to data. So in this case, you've got a company, it's called Gluco Diabetes Patient Data Platform. Now this is HIPAA compliant and diabetes is one of the biggest, fastest growing area in digital healthcare. How do you manage, monitor, and take care of these people? Now the thing to understand about this app platform and most data platforms is the licensing because you have data data can flow to many places and can be used by many companies simultaneously just as your ip can and your data is ip in this case it's non-exclusive that's usually the dom that's the dominant model used so in this case they've got one pharmaceutical company who's got a diabetes drug what do they want to do they want to develop an app for the patients using their diabetes drug to be able to monitor and report the results. Then you've got large pharm um, um, pharmaceutical and medical device companies who have their own um, diabetes monitoring equipment. What do they want to do with that equipment? They want to be able to link it to the smartphone so that the consumers can report and monitor the results of their diabetes monitoring. So this is just one example of what companies are doing in this space for diabetes. Very big market. Second example, therapeutic research. This is huge. This is big. This is growing. In this case, it's analyzing patient records. I mentioned that to you earlier about the patient records. You've got one company called OneDrop who um, has developed AI intelligence uh, platform, which originally was developed for um, diabetes, but has expanded since then to all sorts of chronic illnesses. And they have done a huge licensing deal with Bayer Biodigital Therapy Research. They want to use their um, digital therapeutic solutions for research on cardiovascular disease, oncology, and female health, among others. And again, um, 
a licensing deal like this is done where they're licensing each different use of their AI technology to this company, and that is going to result in enormous licensing fees as a result of this big company using that technology for its research. A third area, or a third digital health care, patient treatments. Again, you're talking about the accumulation of digital data of patients and and um, what they've experienced in symptoms and what treatments have been applied to them. In the case of digital health care, physical therapy, um, one company called Include Health, uh, this is for physical therapy. So what they're able to do is have the patient analysis in real time and through the, the back-end algorithm be able to determine what the corrective treatment plans are and this is all done this is not done with a general um, assessment of saying okay your physical therapy is this based on what we've seen other patients this is about data that's able to go in real time analyze what the actual symptoms are and come back with a very specific corrective protocol using data and in this case what they've done is they're using a monthly subscription license for companies that want to use this particular treatment plan they license it non-exclusively on a monthly subscription license. Very similar in a lot of ways to software. Then you have blockchain, which is um, growing. And in this case, one of the areas that digital health care can play a big role, of course, is in patient data submission. And in this case, Calibrate Blockchain has has. Uh, created their own app platform that would enable the submission of patient information um, on their smartphones. And of course, the reason blockchain is of interest is because you heard earlier about the security, the cybersecurity of this patient information. Nobody wants to fill out all their information about their medical health, send it off on their smartphone, and think it's going to get lost in the cyber universe. So in this case, what they've do what they're doing with their blockchain app technology is they've decided to do exclusive licenses based on individual territory so one hospital in each market and allow them to use the blockchain technology to build their own app so that when patients come in to the hospital they're able to fill out their information electronically and then the, finally, there's the online platform. These are websites, forums, and communities. These are where people go to talk about their treatments, what's going on in their health systems, um, different symptoms, what are they experiencing, whatever the case is. And again, these are ac accumulating large amounts of data about how people are interacting with the healthcare system. Again, valuable data that can help providers, payers, and researchers develop better treatments and protocols for their patients. So in wrapping this up, a couple of key things to keep in mind. When you're licensing your digital um, healthcare technology, remember, it is a trade secret. The back end is, is your data, your algorithm. You've got to keep control on it. Most of the time, the licensing is going to be non-exclusively because you have data that more than one type of company or, you, or usage of it. And so it's important to understand that you can have multiple licensees and build additional fees around it. A lot, many of the models that are built for digital licensing are around per user, per procedure, as you saw, and even software as a service model can be used with digital technology. And of course, if you have a medical device that is going along with your digital healthcare data, that in turn can be licensed more on a conventional royalty of um, net sales or gross sales. So when you're looking at your digital, digital device, when you're looking at digital health care, summarizing the strategies, number one is to focus the technology. Here it's a question, it's the ability to connect your device, to be able to share data and to be able to do it in real time. That's what digital health care is about. Second is to identify it, you're, you're licensing it to use the data. How do you use the data? You use it for treatments. You use it for detecting threats. You use it for monitoring your progress in healing. And third, partnerships. It's all about partnerships, creating partnerships in-house with the payers and providers, and then outside with consumer companies and other types of consumer 
care products. So I thank you for your time. It was a very fast presentation, but I'll be around for the day. I've got a book that's out. If you're interested in learning more about licensing, get that book and I'll be here for the rest of the afternoon. I also offer a newsletter. You can sign up for free on my website. And I thank you for your attention this afternoon.